Lisa Klein is an award-winning director and writer dedicated to crafting groundbreaking documentary features. The S Word is a documentary that tackles one of the most cloistered issues of our time through emotional stories of suicide attempt and lost survivors. Um, she tours the country speaking and using her films to raise awareness of mental health issues. She is co-founder with her husband, Doug Blush, who's here with us today, actually, <laughs> of Mad Picks Inc., an L.A.-based production company dedicated to producing character-driven stories that create global impact and social change. She's a graduate of the University of Michigan and received her MFA from the University of Southern California. Um, so my name is Stephanie Janes. I'm an academic advisor in the College of Business and IT. Um, I also have a master's degree in counseling and I'm a licensed professional counselor. Um, so I have a little bit of um, knowledge in the clinical sense of suicide, but your, uh, your film was inspired by your father and your brother. Um, can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to kind of create the film? Sure. So um, when I was a sophomore in college, first my father, then my brother um, died by suicide. And I, mean, I would like to think that that motivated me right away. It, it took me a while. It took me, you know, I mean, the grief. I grew up here. I grew up um, not in, you know, here, but yeah, like in Southfield. So, um, and uh, yeah, so I went through college and, and I started writing about stuff. I started to write, you know, I mean, this was obviously, you know, just going through the grief and, you know, I went through the period of not really talking about it and not being completely um, open about it and stuff like that. You know, when people said, how did your, you know, how did your father die? And, you know, I would, I would kind of give them sort of the basic outline without saying that he actually took his own life. So it, it, it just took a while. And then I went to uh, grad school in California. I went to film school and then started thinking about this and um, you know what I was going to do. And we did a film on bipolar, on, on people who had bipolar. And in that film, we had a family. We had a, uh, their daughter died by suicide. And I thought, OK, I'm done. I've done it. And I, I can walk away, and then I realized, wow, I mean, you know, second leading cause of death for like this age group, for, you know, and then 10th leading cause of death in the country, just so much, and, you know, my own story and all of that. And then, so that's, I, yeah, I just kind of got to the point where we need to make this film. So I don't know if that kind of answers your question, but I just realized that this was my way. Everybody has their own way of grieving, of dealing with stuff. And this was this was my way, and uh, not being in it was important too, because you know I wanted to meet people and talk to people. And then the other thing I'll say real quick is that um, I I approached it from the standpoint of people who had lost people to suicide, because that's what I knew. I realized that was my story. That that's what I wanted to do. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and thinking about the people we have in the audience here today, uh, mainly staff and housing staff, um, what are some things that you think um, that we can pull out of this video to help our campus? I know you're uh, slightly familiar with our campus, but um, we do have clinical counseling on our campus. But what are ways that we can just open up and allow suicide to not be the S word and be something that is freely talked about if needed? Yeah, I mean, the main thing that I, that I learned even doing this film is it isn't as much talking as it is listening. And the idea of, like, we're, we're all about wanting to help and wanting to give advice and wanting to, like, if you eat quinoa and kale and run and do the, you know, you're going to feel better, you're going to feel better. Yeah. It isn't what everybody needs. Like, not everybody does yoga and that makes them feel better. Um, so it really, really, really does come down to listening and, and letting them express. Like if somebody says, I'm thinking about suicide, the kind of last thing you want to do is shut them down and say, no, 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 come on, no, you're not. It's like, okay, well, suicide's a thing. I mean, it is, it's an option. But can we think of 
six other options, six other things that would make you want to wake up tomorrow? You, you, can you think of five or six things that would make you want to wake up tomorrow morning? Maybe something that you wouldn't, you know, so let them talk about, you know, what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And, you know, the thing about the warning signs, which you probably all know about whether it's, um, you know, just being depressed, not being able to get out of bed, giving things away, talking about not being, you know, not planning and all, you know, all of those things. It's really good to listen to those and to really sort of understand, but it really also is about changes of behavior because sometimes um, somebody feeling gr like you could see somebody like being depressed and, and, you know, and then all of a sudden they're feeling great. That's a sign too because that is almost like they see the exit and they have a plan and all of that. And also, the, the other thing too is being able to say, are you thinking about suicide? It seems like, oh my God, you don't want to plant that idea, but you, you don't because it isn't like somebody's walking around, life is great, and then you say, hey, are you thinking about suicide? And they're like, no, I wasn't, but now that you mention it, that's a great idea. It, it doesn't really work that way. So it really is about just staying open, being open, knowing that you're there for them without judgment. Without judgment's real important too. I think that's important is saying, is, is acknowledging the fact that saying suicide is not gonna plant an idea. If somebody already had that idea, maybe you saying that is going, is gonna be what saves them. Um, one thing I pulled out from the video was when Desiree said that she couldn't call out of work depressed. We can call out if we're sick. We can uh, tell our professors if we're sick, if we need to stay in our dorms or home because we're sick. But it's not as common to call out for a mental health day or, f or for depression. And it's not something that a lot of people talk about. Um, and she even said that it wasn't something that I could talk about to people. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about um, the the similarities between physical and mental wellness and health. Yeah, I feel like it, it seems like it's getting better a little bit, but I feel like we 100% we need mental health parity. I mean, we, we just do. It's, it's like the body, the mind, like it's all connected. And the fact that we look at it differently is, it's outrageous kind of. But if somebody, you know, called into work or school and said, I broke my leg, it's like, oh my God, stay in bed, get better, feel better, you know, or I have diabetes, you know, diabetes and my insulin is, oh, oh, take care of yourself, give yourself an insulin shot, we'll see you tomorrow, you know. Whereas there was a point where, you know, I'm feeling really depressed, I can't get out of bed, it's like, come on, get up, pull yourself up, sure you can, just come in, put a smile on your face, come to work, you know, it, it just, even though it is getting better, it's still stigmatized, it's still, not thought of the same way. It just isn't. It isn't like, you know, I'm going to heal a bone or, you know, I had a heart attack and we're going to put a stent in. It, it just, none of that is the same. It is because we're dealing with something that, A, we don't really know about. It's a, it's a very inexact science. And then people think, well, take a pill, you'll feel better. Or, you know, and it's, it's, it's very different for everybody. And it, it really isn't, you know, so. I think mental health days and all of that stuff and people really needing to talk to somebody and, and you know, be able to deal with stuff, it's just really, really, really important. And, and I'm hoping that we can get to professors and bosses and people like that to understand it is exactly the same thing. It just is. If somebody's feeling a certain way, they're feeling a certain way, whether they can't walk because they their ankle sprained or they can't get up in the morning because they just can't face the day. It's the same thing, you know, it's still, they're, they're not, you know, they're debilitated in some way. And we, we have to respect that. We have to figure out a way to respect that, I think. That makes a lot of sense, and especially when we are thinking about all the things that we offer to our students on campus, we want them to be involved and we want them to do very well in their classes. We want them to be, um, 
uh, active outside of the community and, and getting internships and all of these things. And we have a lot of athletes on our campus. Um, and so we are almost saying, you know, on top of that, we want you to add in some self-care. And to some students, or to some people even, um, adding in self-care might be actually saying no to some of those things. And I think that in, in our kind of um, hustling society that we have, um, that's kind of overlooked because we are always saying we can do more, we can do more, we can do more. Um, but some people don't have the capacity for that. Um, which can lead to the, those feelings of depression and anxiety. Um, and you mentioned that uh, diet, exercise, meditation, yoga, that's, those are things that we think of as wellness and self-care. You know, when it's on paper, we think, okay, you know, you're feeling depressed, why don't you get out of bed and um, go for a jog? Um, but for not, not for everybody is that a, uh, a solution. Um, and so for some people, um, those realistic goals of like piece by piece um, saying, okay, I'm gonna get out of the bed and I'm gonna change my clothes today. That is a victory and a goal. Um, so can you talk a little bit about self-care and how we on our campus might be able to uh, promote self-care and wellness as it may look for different populations of students? Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it, in a weird way, I feel like self-care has gotten a little stigmatized. You know, the idea of, oh, we need a safe space. We need self-care. We need, you know, and then people think of that as, because the word self is in it, so they think of it as selfish. And it so isn't. It so isn't. And, and maybe we need another term for it. You know, I, I don't know, because I feel like it's gotten a little bit you know, bastardized in a way. And, and if we look at like, you know, you mentioned sports, which made me think of tennis. And it made me think of like Naomi Osaka, or, or if we think of like Simone Biles in gymnastics, you know, and the fact that they're speaking out, I think is awesome. And then you have the critics saying, oh, come on, she makes $5 billion a year, she can get out of bed and tumble, you know, whatever. It's like, it doesn't work that way. It isn't it just because you're making a lot of money or you're doing this. Or you're, that's the one thing about suicide and mental health. That is probably maybe the only thing in the world that doesn't discriminate. It just doesn't. It doesn't care if you're rich, poor, a, a celebrity athlete. It, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. And, um, you know, we're all going through something. We all have our baggage. We all, if you're over the age of like, 12, maybe even eight, you know, you have some baggage, you have some, some stuff. So I think it is about, you know, again, if you want to change the term, maybe that's the thing to do, but the idea that self-care is not selfish, it's, it's, it's like, again, you break your leg, you go to the doctor, you get a cast, you're on crutch, you know, you go through whatever you need to go through. And, and if you have to kind of figure out a way to, um, to make, you know, to make that an analogy or something, and, and you know, you know it's, it's the same thing. It's just, it's figuring out a way that you can get from point A to point B. You know, point A being your bed and point B being your um, classroom, you know. What is gonna make you feel healthy to do that? Who are you gonna talk to? You know, have your, safe or whatever word, you know, people who you're going to talk to, whether it's, you know, your therapist or your counselor or your advisor, you know, whoever, you know, your people are. And as, as people in housing, you're, I mean, like one of my favorite people was my RA. And when I was going through everything, she was the person who I talked to. You know, she was right next door. My room happened to be next door to hers, but it was, it was just very, sort of welcoming. It wasn't like judgy. I could just be who I wanted to be. And it really is, it isn't like every person's going to be that way. And maybe your RA isn't that way. Maybe you're an RA and you are that way. You know, so it, it, it totally depends on the person and the chemistry between the people, but it really is finding your people. And training, education, 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 you know, training the, you know, like the whole thing with cops. Like you take cops, who, sorry, I, I tend to go off a, a thing, but you know, so you have cops and, and their job is to go and get the perpetrator and do the thing. They're not trained to be like, how are you feeling today? Oh, are you feeling like disordered somehow? You know, how can I, they're not trained for that. And, and to, to add to their burden of having to, you know, 
catch criminals or do whatever they have to do, you know, getting more people who are doing these things. And so whether it's, you know, you have social workers on campus, you have people who are specifically trained to do this, and friends, you know. So if that answers your question, and, and rambles at the same time. Okay. No, I appreciate that. I think um, there were some different perspectives in the film of um, there being professionals and uh, having the professional aspect, but also the peer aspect of peer-to-peer um, -peer mentoring or counseling or even just listening. Um, and I think that that's an important way to be able to to reach more people, um, reach more students, and um, can you talk a little bit about that more like that peer-to-peer -peer, um, friendship or counseling or however you want to uh, pose that and how that might help um, students with their their struggles? Absolutely. When we, um, because we filmed probably like 300 hours of, of footage and you know once we realized it's a lot long for a film, and um, you know, like what was important, and we had we had a psychologist and psychiatrists and stuff. And as you can see, it's pretty pared down. Not because they're not important; they're not an important part of the thing. But you know, sometimes it's not affordable. Sometimes it's not accessible. Sometimes you. Do, it is like it's it's like a relationship. It's almost like dating, like finding the right therapist for you. Like you know, like I know when I was in college and everything sort of happened and I was trying to figure things out and I, I was at Michigan and I went to a, um, I think he, he was a student, he was a, um, a PhD student or whatever. It was not the right relationship, you know, it just wasn't. It was like, you know, well, tell me about it. And I'm like, that's it, I'm done, I'm done with therapy. I, you know, I didn't learn until later that it was something, you know, okay. But the thing about friendships, like it's like, they're there at two in the morning and they're there, you know, when you, and, and to me, it, because for so much of part of what I was going through, it was many, it was much more about friendships and relationships than it was about therapy. And it's different, you know, it is different. It was like, again, I was young and, and thinking, oh God, I have to pay somebody to listen to me? That's not fair, they don't really care. You know, so finding somebody who does care and willing to listen, generally it's a team though, because if you're really struggling and you're dealing with stuff, you can be a real pain in the ass, you know, truly. And, and it is something that, you know, you have one person and that's a one person you're going to, that's a lot for them too, and they're gonna need self-care. And if you are a caregiver, if you have a best friend or, or a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, or whoever it is, who's going through something, you hopefully are getting the care you need, whether it's a therapist or a friend or whatever. It, it is a domino effect because it isn't like somebody is going through the struggle alone. It is, I mean, their, their family, it's, it's, it's all, it's a very, very much a, a village or family thing. So it is about finding the right people, it, people you trust, people you can talk to, people you can, and, and it'd be great. I mean, if, if, if therapy is something, then that is part of it, you know, and people, some people are medication, some people aren't, but if that's part of your thing, it's part of it. But to say, I'm gonna take a pill and be better, that's just not gonna work that way. It, it, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff together, you know, it's a lot of stuff together, and it, it's, it, it's, well, it's, 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 I hate to say never, but kind of never-ish thing to um, take your own life. It's never one thing. It's never like, oh, my boyfriend broke up with me, I'm gonna kill him. The, the, there's a lot of stuff. So because it's so complicated, it's also complicated to uh, try to heal and deal with it. There's a lot of moving factors yeah. of somebody who's struggling with mental health and especially suicidal thoughts. Um, one of the other things that you just mentioned was um, if you are a caregiver and you are, um, you know, burdened with having that on your conscious, if somebody um, chooses to die by suicide or um, you might have somebody who even has suicidal thoughts and so now you're carrying that. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about what that feels like to carry that burden and how you mentioned self-care, but how um, somebody who's carrying that burden can also, um, you know, make sure that they remain okay and that they are um, mentally well. Yeah, like 
one of the things, you know, because there are all these things that, um, you know, again, if you, if you read all the, the stuff of things that, that may lead to suicide, suicidal ideation or suicide, it's losing to somebody to suicide. You know, I mean, that's part of it too. And the tricky part of being a caregiver and being, you know, having like a, uh, a really close friend or family member who's dealing with something, you can't go to them and say, you're, bur you're a burden because feeling like a burden is part of what is gonna make somebody not wanna be here. And they're gonna feel like a burden anyway. Even if you're like, no, it's great, everything's fine. So that's why it's really important to have yet another person, you know, to kind of keep it going. But as far as the guilt of some, again, I was young, um, but it doesn't mean that, and, and the guilt and the, the what ifs and why didn't I's and all of that, that, at least for me, never ever goes away. So it really is about, I mean, one thing I did learn in therapy, it isn't about like solving it, like, okay, I'm okay with these suicides now. I'm okay losing my brother. Never, ever, ever, but it's getting the tools, it's getting the coping mechanism, it's getting the coping mechanisms. How do I deal with the what ifs? And for me, it was making a film and talking to people and seeing, hey, maybe they can answer the question. Nobody's gonna answer the question. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's basically making the film gave me more questions and more things to think about, but not always in a bad way. I mean, it, it was just like, okay, and also feeling less alone, which was not, my, you know, it was a reason for making the film to help other people, but that it helped me too, you know, just the, the idea of feeling less alone. So all of that stuff, you could almost um, look at it as somebody who's struggling and the caregiver, it's, a, it's different and the same because they both need things. You know, you, you need things, and sometimes you need the same things. Like, you need a person or people who are going to be there for you so you can talk about the stuff that's weighing on you, the fact that you feel guilty that this person is thinking about suicide or that this person who you've been helping took their own life. Like, like how are you going to – they can tell you 5,000 times not to feel guilty. You had nothing to do. It had nothing to you. There was nothing you could have done, all of that. It is kind of true. There, there's nothing that you could do now – because if they're gone, there just isn't. I mean, that is the bottom line. There's nothing that you could have done now. So if you, you know, meditate or whatever like, and believe in that stuff, then it's like, okay, but what can I do moving forward? How can I take it with the next person? And so you learn each time. Unfortunately, sometimes the lessons are really, really hard. But you do, you know, it, it's like, I'm not going to let this happen again. And I'm, I mean, I know how, I, how vigilant I am with people who I care about when I hear that they're struggling and going through things. It's like, you know, and sometimes I'll just like be joking around. It's like, no, you can't, you know, and, and this is not the right thing to say at all. But it's like, no, you can't because it's about me. It's not about you anymore. You know, th that's not the right thing to say. But, um, you know, how, but sometimes joking around is okay, you know, but, it, but it's, you know, just making people understand that they're important. And, and, you know, it's really important that they're here. Nobody wants them to go away and, uh, but without making them feel guilty for thinking about it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that, that makes sense in the um, sense that you were saying um, th about the language and what, what not to say, what to say. And I think language matters. One of the things um, that came up was um, that Previously, we had used words like committed suicide, um, and now um, we try to use words like died by suicide. Um, and I think a lot of times people mention suicide or I'm going to kill myself, or they do, you know, the, oh, kill me now, you know, sort of um, thing when they're just doing something annoying. And I think people can be a little flippant with language and not really think about how um, that might affect somebody, whether they know what they're going through or not. Um, so can you talk a little bit about um, how the language around uh, suicide has changed in um, your experience and, and what are some things not to say versus things to say? Yeah, I mean, the first, the first rule, I think, is read the room, you know? I mean, like, if you're just in, with a group of your friends and it's not, like, a sensitive topic, you know, say whatever you want. Um, but, no, in general, yeah, I mean, commit is a heavy, burdensome word. It just is. I mean, yes, you can commit to marriage, you know, like what they were saying in the film. Um, but 
like when you commit adultery or commit murder or commit, it's a big, it is a big word and it's, it, it carries a lot of weight. So thinking about it um, as dying by suicide and all of that as opposed to, because you, once you get into semantics, it's like anything, you know, that's, it, it can be divisive because some people say this and think this way and some people say that and think that way and yeah, that's why, you know, it's like reading the, it's like, you know, yeah, it's, it's good to be sensitive to how other people are feeling for sure and, and you know, and somebody dying by suicide. The commit is also makes it a choice and there are a lot of people who believe that suicide is not a choice because it's in, because the idea that it isn't that somebody wants to die, you know, it, because most of us don't know what death feels like unless we've had like an out of, you know, like a, a death experience or something and we've been there and saw the light. But in general, we don't know what that is, but we do know what it's like to wake up every day and feel awful and feel a certain way and thinking, I, I don't want to get up tomorrow because I can't imagine feeling this way. So when you think about it that way, dying by suicide, it, it, it's sort of the cause of death as opposed to this person killed, you know, this person did, you know, made a choice and did that. So it, it, it really is like anything else um, of just kind of being sensitive, being thoughtful, just being thoughtful to the people you're talking to. It, it, it's no different from any other language stuff or anything else that you're trying to do when you're trying to kind of take care of other people's feelings, I think. Thanks for that. One of the themes of the film was activism and um, advocacy for suicide. And there's plenty of groups and organizations um, that are out there, um, and it seems like there's a lot to do still in the legislature um, and just in general with uh, how we take care of people who have mental illness, not just only suicide, but mental illness. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, anything that you've done um, as far as uh, activism goes or any things that you're aware of, especially things that might be in the legislature right now that will uh, hopefully uh, change the way that we uh, look at this population? Yeah, like just, you know, for me, like working with schools and stuff like that, but yeah, it, it does need, the, Again, the, the number, to me, the main thing is mental health parity. So it's, I mean, we see how weird healthcare is in this country anyway. And so it isn't equal for all. And so then you triple, quadruple that um, with mental health care, you know, plus the stigma. So if we were to use, um, you know, even have use health insurance to see the th our therapist or whatever, and then decide to run for office. You know, there's that. So there are so many things, and we just we, you know, it, it's it sounds so, whatever. But it, we just need to equalize it. We just need to make it okay and be able to talk about it and let suicide just be a word. You know, it's just another thing. You know, it's a heart attack. It's a stroke. It's suicide, suicidal thoughts. It's it's you know all of that. But in terms of legislation, I think it just needs to be the same thing when you go to the doctor. And I think doctors, because when you have a, a generally, like with a therapist or a, psych, a psychiatrist, they have to learn CPR. I mean, that's just, it's generally part of the care. But a medical doctor does not need to learn necessarily how to talk to somebody who's thinking about, I mean, you might have really compassionate doctors who have taken it upon themselves to do that, but I think this stuff should be taught in medical school, like beyond bedside matter, you know? I mean, I think that it should be, when you're going to medical school, this is all part of it. So it's like, okay, I may go the psychiatric way, I may go this way, it's gotta mesh. You know, it, it just has to mesh. And I think with legislation, I think it's the same thing. Like when you're talking about health care, you're talking about whether, you know, Obamacare, whatever, it's, you know, I think it's getting, again, I think it's getting better, but I think it's got to be right there. I think it's got to be boom, boom. That's, you know, that, that, that's my thing. And then with school, and that's the stuff that I've been trying to work toward is, you know, you have a health class in fifth grade, sixth grade, third grade, fourth grade, you know, whatever. It's like mental health needs to be part of it. And not, you know, okay, today we're gonna talk about it just woven in 
you know? It's like mind, body, mind, body, mind, mind body. I mean, it's got to start at like kindergarten, first grade, you know, whatever. So it's not scary. It can, it, you know, we got to make, I mean, I want suicide itself should be scary because we don't want anyone to do it. But we need to talk about how we're, you know, what we're thinking about or if we're thinking, you know, what we're thinking about. Even if, you know, I mean, if you think about like Uvalde or Sandy Hook or things like that, like if, if you know, you don't want to say if such and such had gotten care, this wouldn't have happened. But maybe not. Maybe if, if they had really looked at these drawings and there was somebody to talk to and that they could have felt safe enough to say, yeah, I want to kill my classmates, you know? It's, it, that, that in and of itself is not okay, but the fact that you talked about it is great. And now we can work with that. It gives us something to work about. It gives us something to work with. So I think with public school, I think stuff like this probably needs to have you know, a structure and a mandate. So that, that's what I believe. Thanks for sharing. I also want to make sure that we have time if any of, um, of you have questions or any comments about the, the video to feel free to chime in. And how much time do we have, Vila? We're good. Okay, good. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to point out to you about the film is that there were perspectives from attempt survivors, loved ones of attempt survivors, loved ones of people who have died by suicide, friends and family of those suffering, um, and then also a little bit about professionals and administrators on college campuses. And I think that those um, those displays that, of the backpacks um, were very moving and um, you know there's there's not as much spoken around it. you know here we have the um, the little windmills on campus and um, have brought that to the attention of people but again this is in um, we have a suicide awareness month whereas like you were saying we kind of just need to incorporate it and incorporate mental health throughout and let it be okay to not be okay and that's one of the biggest things that um, I think kind of touching on your point is from a young age um, letting it be okay to not be okay um, and so those types of displays are very moving in the sense that it it allows us to feel that and it allows us to feel um, sadness but also give us some awareness of what we can do um, and grieve what has been ha what has happened but also move forward and be hopeful about the future and make changes um, so I just really want to thank you about uh, for coming and for showing us your video. And um, if anybody else has any comments, please feel free to chime in. Um, and if you have any uh, last remarks that you'd like to make, please feel free. Yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of the, um, you know, having, having sort of all of it, um, it was really important to me, because as I said before, like, you know, nobody struggles alone. You know, it's really important to hear from other people because they're going through, you know, they're going through it too. So that, you know, that, that perspective. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it's really just about, you know, being able to feel less alone. And, and what you brought up when you said like Suicide Awareness Month or Black History Month or any month, it's all great, but it should be all the time. I mean, I just feel like it's like, oh yeah, let, let's just talk about black history in February and ignore it the other 11 months. Let's just talk about mental health in September and then we, d we don't really have to bring it up again. Or wh whatever, you know, w women's, I think there's like a, a you know, female studies month or whatever. Yeah, it, it, it's just, I just feel like everything needs to be, and you know, again, when we're talking about mental health and suicide, it just getting it to a place because I guess 50, 60 years ago, cancer was the C word, right? Supposedly, you know, so um, people didn't want to talk about, you know, and and so, but it, but now treatments and this and this and this and this, it, it it really being able to speak about something, it just makes a difference. It just does. I mean, we've seen it, and so um, that's really the main thing with this you know with this film is is you know to be able to feel comfortable enough find people be able to talk about it whatever it is so that's kind of our our thing and yeah if anybody has any questions or comments love to hear
And if not, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. It's all okay. It's okay to not be okay or to not ask questions. That is a good question. Um, right now it's on Amazon Prime, and it's on, uh, what's the other thing called? Documentary Plus. Documentary Plus, and then, yeah, and yeah, so it's free on those. And then our website is um, the S Word Movie. The S Word Movie dot com. Yeah. And your website has a lot of resources a as well. A lot of resources, a lot of, yeah, 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 a lot of resources. The other thing, too, that I, that I just, just to say is that um, because, as I said, we, we filmed like 300 hours, so we had this thing because it was really important for me to not do a documentary on suicide and walk away. Um, yeah, we did this in 2017 is when I think it came out, and then there were the, those two dark years of the thing, the pandemic. Um, and so uh, we wanted to kind of multi-platform like with the, with the website. So we have a lot of this thing called, we have S word stories, where if somebody has, you know, a s story, whether it's written or a one minute video or whatever, that's something you could send to us too, you know, and we'd, we'd put it up and, and whatever. Cause we just want to, I, I just feel like if people share their stories, somebody's gonna relate and it's gonna help somebody. It doesn't matter if it's one, you know, if it's one person, if it's, you know, 35. But, um, yeah, so it, it is really important to share those stories. Thank you. Well, I think the theme is is to talk about it, right? And that's kind of your your mission is to talk about it and not make it um, a silent um, topic and, and make sure that there's awareness around it. So we really thank you for being here and allowing us to show this to our staff and on our campus to bring awareness. Um, and I know I, in particular, will take some of those stories and will be able to um, kind of take those stories and think about them in terms of what I can do to help my students that I work with also, um, you know, just keeping it in the back of my mind at all times even you know with friends and family so thank you so much for being with us today thank you guys thanks for coming